This is Mona Scott Young, CEO of Mona Me Entertainment and executive producer of VH1's Love and Hip Hop, and you're watching Miss Drama TV. Hey. very lovely young lady. Oh, I love us. the young, thank you very much. <laughs> young lady in front of us is the one and only Mona Scott Young, and she is the executive producer of Love and Hip Hop. We are now in its second season, very yes, exciting. Yes. Now, in addition to that, you know, you have Mona Me Entertainment, which is a multifaceted company. I mean, you do the management, you do, you do events, life. I mean, you do so many different things. And then, of course, people know you from Violator. Mm -hmm. You helped to build that brand to what it is today. So I have to ask, is there any Mona time? Do you have time to just relax and, and not be that person handling all those different aspects? Well, you know, it's all Mona time because this is everything that I'm doing, I put myself into. I, you know, love what I do. It's a big part of who I am in my life. It's fully integrated into my personal life as well. So this is me. This is what I do. So it's all Mona time. Okay. All right. Very interesting because, of course, we see you so busy and it's like, oh, I wonder if she takes vacation, she relaxes. But I know this is her passion, so of course we can't. You it's know. it's my passion, but it's also again fully integrated to my life. I mean, my family is a big part of everything okay. that I do. You know, they weigh in on um, the shows that I'm working on. Of course, I don't let my kids watch Love and Hip Hop, but they certainly have their opinions about it. <laughs> my son's 14 now. I think he's been sneaking it in. My right. husband, you know, who is the primary caretaker at home, he, you know, is there with me at nights when I come home, and I want to talk about the day, and I want to conceptualize ideas. Ideas and right. so they're all a very big part of it. I mean, they make a lot of sacrifices. I'm not around a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just went away to shoot. My husband came with me. Okay. Um, you know, we make sure that we carve out our family time. But again, what I do is such a big part of you know right. who we are as a family that it's all integrated. That's that's wonderful. Now, of course, you know, talking about the show because everybody is a huge fan. You have millions of viewers. I mean, it's, it's exciting in many ways. Now. Kind of going to the, the beginning stages, what was your initial hope with the show? And do you think you've accomplished it thus far? I mean, I think initially when we started with the show, because the show started out as something very different. It was a show about Jim and following his life. and. When they got some tape on him, it was actually kind of an anti-reality show because Jim didn't want the cameras in his face. He was going through a lot. So the show has had a very big evolution. And when we finally decided on making it an ensemble cast of women with Jim and Chrissy kind of being our cornerstone couple, right. what I wanted to accomplish was one, um, showing the hip hop world as a backdrop. I don't think a lot of people uh, have had a chance to see much more than the images that are portrayed in the music videos and you know it's all about the glamour, the glitz, the money, you know, the women and I don't think people, you know, stop to realize that these were, you know, real life relationships and human beings behind this. So I definitely wanted to show that. I wanted to find a way to tell these women stories in a, in a way that allowed you to get to know them a little bit more than I think we had had thus far in a lot of the ensemble cast shows that were out there. So those were, you know, kind of my two areas of focus. And, and I think we managed to do that. I get a lot of feedback from people that, wow, it's really good to see what happens behind the scenes. And, you know, wow, I never would have thought that life, you know, was that difficult because I thought it was all sexy and, you know, right. private jets. Party. And who thought that these women, you know, really had to suffer some of the things that they went through. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's been a good experience for these women as well as for the women watching. Fantastic. Now, talking about, you know, so many eyes on the show, you know, there's definitely going to be scrutiny, there's definitely going to be critiques. You know, there's going to be a lot of love as well. What does, what do you hope that is essentially the message that you're conveying? I mean, is there something when you thought, when you get down to the nitty gritty and you say, okay, I want people to get this from it. Beyond everything that they see, I want them to get this. What is that message that you hope to invoke? Um, uh, one, there was a very big message about kind of urban love, black love that I wanted to send out there. I think there's something very special about Chrissy and Jim's relationship that people, you know, don't get to see very often, especially in the hip-hop culture. You know, it's always about being single and being available and having a bunch of women falling at your feet. And I think that, you know, sometimes the women out there who are, you know, um, chasing these rappers tend to, you know, not think about the fact that they're in relationships and stuff. And it's really not their responsibility, but I think it was nice to be able to show 
that there is fidelity, there is real love, there is, you know, a real sense of family in the hip hop culture as well. Because again, that's not something that's showcased very often. Absolutely. So that was, you know, one area of focus. And two, um, showing that we come in all shapes, sizes, colors, you know, personalities, dynamics, showing a full wide range of the women in this world. Um, I think that that's something that sometimes gets stereotyped a lot as well. People, right. you know, look at me and say, you know, oh, there aren't many women who are like you. And yeah, they are. There are quite a few. Yandy's one of them. There are a lot of young women coming up in the game that are finding their way and who are trying to, you know, make a name for themselves on the business side. And there are as many stories, you know, that are similar to Emily's story. Women who are just in love with these men and who want to find a way to have some sense of normalcy to that relationship. The Christies of the world who are holding these dudes down at home and who, you know, have their back in every area and who deserve, you know, a little bit of attention themselves for what they, you know, go through to support these guys in every area of their life. So I wanted to show that full dynamic, the Absolutely. full range. Of course, one of the elements that I think people kind of have their most conversation about is the drama. Because mm -hmm. we, we see it, we, we, we can identify with it, or we can, you know, hate it or whatever you want to call it. But has there ever been a point in the show where you're like, okay, this is too much drama? Where you're like, okay, we need to stop. We need to gather our thoughts. We need to do something. <laughs> and has there ever been one moment? No, there were several. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about those moments. What is your reaction when you see this, when you're in the midst of it, when you're feeling it? How do you react to that? And what do you say to those you know, cast members, those, those people, these are your friends, people that you've grown to know and care about. What do you say to them at those I points? mean, I think that's a, a very, very challenging part of what I do. One, that you do grow to care about them, you develop a relationship with them, but also when we did this show, we made a commitment to kind of make the truest depiction, right? To be 100% honest at all times. And to follow exactly what was going on. And so it isn't as simple as me going, okay, this is way too much, turn off the cameras, we're not gonna follow this. It's about figuring out how to help them kind of get through it because it is part of what is going on in their lives right now and that is what we're following. But there were times where, again, none of this is staged, none of this is premeditated. They're all being very, very honest about staying true to their emotions at that moment in time and being in the moment as it's happening so yeah some of the stuff that happened it was like whoa what the hell you know because it wasn't expected it wasn't anything that we set out to try to get um, but you know I'll say to their credit they powered through it they stayed with it it would have been easy to be like I'm done I can't do this I don't want to be you know um, a part of this but they were honest about the fact that listen I'm not proud of this moment but this was my reaction to the situation and we said we were going to stay true to who we are, we've got to stick with this. So it's about communication. There was a lot of times where that communication, there was the threat of it breaking down because the moments were really difficult and really too real, mm -hmm. and we just had to kind of power through it. And I'm committed to these guys. You know, it isn't just about getting what I need to make a great show and then, you know, riding off into the sunset. It was about being there for the aftermath and being there for the post you know, trauma of it all and working through it, you know, communication played a big role. Absolutely. And, you know, were, were there moments where you were just outright disappointed? Never disappointed, because none of this is about judgment. It isn't about looking and passing any kind of judgment on, you know, anything that's going on, good or bad. Okay. It's about just, again, let's just stay true to this. If this is how you're feeling, let's go with this. Don't feel like you have to say or do anything other than this because you're concerned about how you're gonna come off. Because the one thing I feel the audience can sniff out is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you start to manipulate the way you wanna be perceived, I think that you're gonna fall short. Okay. So, you know, there was never disappointment in my part. There was always a sense of, again, support, wanting to help them get through it. Because that was the most, some of the most difficult moments where it was like, you know, I don't think I can do this. I don't know, you know, that I can move forward with this story. And it was just about like, listen, this is what it is, let's talk through it. What are you feeling right now? How do we put this in a way that you can express it so that you get it out there and you deliver, because the audience is already vested. Mm -hmm. You know, they bought into this, they, they want to know what happens next, we can't just leave them hanging. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. so, gotcha. that was more of it. Up in the spot, never seen nothing like no OMG, what she putting on the side, saw that Niggas don't like it, no Girls get excited, yeah. then the bottle start to appear You think I was a sight, she said she had a feeling So I told her don't fight